the Men's College Soccer Review presented by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. The largest soccer coaches organization in the world, the NSCAA is dedicated to providing the best in soccer coaching education and membership services and benefits. Visit NSCAA.com for more information. And welcome to High Point, North Carolina, as we get ready for High Point University and VCU. I'm Dean Linky, along with my broadcast partner, Keith Tabatsik. And Keith, first off, a great opportunity for High Point to showcase this wonderful university. Yeah, well, they have an outstanding university here. I know you did the big tour today, and we're very impressed with it. And, of course, the feel that they have and the setup is great. What they also are trying to showcase, of course, is their team tonight, one that is not is not playing to their record, really. I mean, uh, or playing the record is certainly not what they should be. This team is a very good attacking team. They won 16 games last year. This year, only five games right now, but they can attack Dean. I'll tell you, I think they will tonight. How about VCU? Well, VCU also a team that's not as good as their record, even though they're 9-7-2 and two right now. I've seen, I've seen VCU play a couple times this year. I think they play excellent soccer. And it's a team that if they could get a few more wins at the end of the year, they could get on the bubble for the NCAA tournament. And these two conferences break them down. Yeah, we got the Big South Conference, and, and in the Big South, eight of the ten teams make the tournament. Now, last year, the final was Coastal Carolina versus High Point. High Point had run the table during the season. Coastal Carolina beats them 3-1 to one in the final. This year, High Point's hoping to maybe turn that around and get to the final of the tournament, which will be an automatic bid into the NCAAs. When you look at other conferences, you got to go out west. Big game next week, UCSB, Cal Poly. Yeah, we well, got Cal Poly, USB, and that, by the way, is, is a re revenge match for Santa Barbara. They lost to Cal Poly earlier this year. There will be a huge crowd. I bet we have 12,000 plus to watch that. Make sure you tune in. That's 10 p.m. Eastern time, by the way, uh, next week. And by the way, we, did, we skipped over the, the Colonial Athletic Conference with VCU, and that is one of the toughest conferences in the country. Dean, right now, five of the top 40 teams of the RPI come out of the Colonial Athletic Conference. James Madison and Old Dominion at the top, and they only have six teams that get into their tournament, what VCU has to do in their last three games at home. Lots of big goal scores happening right now, Keith. You know, I'll tell you, the race for the golden boot, if you will, is going to be close. You have Darren Maddox from Akron, Mark Sherrard from Memphis at the top right now with 17 goals. And then right behind him with 16 goals. We saw Andrew Wenger on TV from Duke. You know we're going to say his name. Uh, you got Gallardo uh, Zades from Cal Bakersfield in there and Ashton Bennett from Coastal Carolina, all with 16 and a bunch of guys right behind them with 15. And your coach-to-coach -coach shout out? Well, my coach-to-coach -coach shout out to this is a special one to me because he has been a longtime figure in Washington, D.C. coaching area. My close friend, George Lister, head coach at George Washington University, will be retiring after this year. George, 24 years as the Colonials head coach, went to three NCAA tournaments, Sweet 16 in 1989, and George retires as the winningest coach in Colonial history. Congratulations, George. Enjoy retirement and enjoy, enjoy not having to go recruiting. RPI, break it down real quick. Well, we had the second RPI. RPI that came out this week, and I'll tell you what, it shifted like a California earthquake. Some teams move 10, some teams move 20 spots even, one way or the other. Brings a lot of stress to coaches and everything, but it really doesn't mean a whole lot right yet now. What it does mean is that if you want to get one of those 26 at-large bids, some teams still have a lot of work to do, and that's what it showed. Lots of changes could be happening in NCAA soccer. Yeah, there's a proposal out right now that could really affect, and I think in a negative way, uh, the men's and women's soccer programs as well as some other programs. Three main things that are on the table. One, the elimination of competition in the non-traditional season. That means the spring season. Only practice in the spring, no games. Right. Second thing, no international tours, no more foreign tours for any any sport. And the third thing is a is a 10 percent reduction in the actual games during the season for soccer. That means going from 20 to 18. I don't think that's a good thing. You know, I don't think that that's going to be good for men's or women's soccer. And we have to do something to try to not let that go through. So what can coaches do? Well, I think it's very important for all the coaches to know that they got all have an email from Rob Keogh, director of soccer programs for the NSCA, with a link for their student athletes to fill out a survey. This has to be done by Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They've had over 2,000 responses so far. We need to get to over 12,000 responses. So coaches, make sure you get your students to do this right away. If, you, if you're looking at this right now and it hasn't been done, you probably have 24 hours to do it. How's it affect student athletes? Well, I think you look at it this way, Dean. If you're a Division I student athlete, you're not going to go to a school to play just 18 games in a whole year. 
So I think that that's one of the things that doesn't give you the benefit of having a, a full season and in fact the off season to just train in the off season, not have games. It would be like going to class and never have a test. Now students may like that, but student athletes are not going to like not having to play. I think that's one of the biggest things. I also think, by the way, that you're going to see some players not going to college and trying to go to the pros or leaving early, and a lot of those will be making mistakes, too. All right, let's take a look now at your NSCAA Continental Tire Top 25. Sasho Sarovsky, Maryland at number one. Yeah, number one in the rankings, number one in the RPI as well. And then at number two, it's New Mexico, still the only undefeated team in the country. Creighton midweek, a 2-0 win over Drake, yet another shutout for Creighton. Then you got at five and six, two of the Big East teams. There are seven Big East teams in the top 40 in RPI. And then Indiana and Central Florida are tied for 10th in the top 25 and you go to the second page Dean and you're going to look there UCLA at 20 but Notre Dame a 2-1 win Big East win over Providence midweek they have an 8-3 and 4 record 36 RPI St. John's they lost midweek to Rutgers in a huge conference game in the division 10-5 and 2 for St. John's and then rounding that out you have Georgetown 19 in the country 42 RPI and Washington 20 in the country but 53 RPI in the final five, James Madison, a huge 3-2 win over Old Dominion in the Colonial Conference. They're 12-2 and 1. Furman at 38 in the RPI, 24 in the top 25. And then Monmouth, Robbie McCourt's team, back into the top 25. Your top 25, Keith, presented by Continental Tire, innovative technology, driving confidence. Learn more at ContinentalTire.com. And your Disney Soccer NSCAA Players of the Week. Well, you have Chip Saunders from Davidson. The goalkeeper had two shutouts, seven saves in each game. These were one nothing wins for Davidson over UNC and Wofford. Congratulations, Chip Saunders. And on the women's side, Laura Weinberg for Duke. Both goals in the 2 0 win over Wake Forest. She is leading Duke to the top of the ACC and, in fact, to the regular season title. Congratulations, Laura Weinberg. And congratulations to your Disney Soccer NSCAA Players of the Week. What a great one here as High Point comes back. Your host team with a big win over VCU, three to two. No, absolutely, and it was it was a lot of goals. We said they'd be attacking all night. Both teams did not disappoint with this. And as we go to the highlights, Dean, in the first half, teams going back and forth, but it was in the 21st minute. This is Sean Sloan turning, no one closing him down. Rocketed to the upper 90, one nothing to High Point. 10 minutes later, it's a corner kick. Goes down on a rebound off of Michael Chesler save and that rebound goal by Jason Johnson that was an easy goal for him to tie it up but watch this goal by Jason Johnson Carlton Belmar with the cross a bicycle kick up for 90 no way for Chesler another look at that one one of the goals of the year that's how the half ended then in the second half this is the 80th minute there's a corner kick and it's a zero Okioma with the goal and now right after that that is Shane Malcolm putting the game away just 45 seconds later off a rebound from Alex Martinez shot and the win for High Point 3-2. to two. Boy, and what a great tribute to the fans that came out here to support High Point. We got more soccer coming your way as we will be out at Washington for Washington and Washington State on Thursday. And then UCSB Cal Poly could be 18,000 out there as the NSCA Game of the Week wraps up on Fox Soccer. The Men's College Soccer Review is brought to you by the NSCAA, which reminds you, the NSCAA convention is coming to Kansas City January 11th through the 15th. To learn more, visit NSCAA.com.